The thing about writing is if you really try, if you do it every day and you put in your time, you get better. I don't know if there's a lot. I think writing is something that if you really plug away at it, you can get better. We always imagine that your life is going to be writing in screenplay format and you're going to send it off to somebody and they're going to go and make it and you get all the credit. It's like that world is dead. You're going to have to do it. One person once asked me, what's the most important part of a first draft? And I said, the most important words for the first draft are the end. You've got to have a plan and a goal to go into this thing. It's one in a million shots, so take it. But if you're going to take it, make the best of what you've got. I think the big tip would be to, to learn your craft as well as you possibly can, to learn what you do well and, and what moves you. When, when you read your stuff, your, your own stuff, be honest with how bad it is and look at it and find the places where it does come alive, even if just for a sec, even if it's just a line, because that right there is the key to unlocking what is going to make you successful. Just remember to stay on top, you gotta remember when to touch bottom. Go back and remember why you're doing this in the first place. When I started, Fred Decker and I, we had a piece of paper with tape on it, we put over the typewriter, just said, this is important. So don't talk about someday I'm gonna write a book, write it the book. There's a typer to sit down and tap the keys and just start doing it. Just do it. Just do it. Failure is constant for everyone. And I mean it. Everybody fails at this all the time. Not just screenwriters, but I think anyone who tries to illuminate the human experience in an authentic way. In fact, I think that free falling feeling you get right on the knife edge of total disaster may in fact be an essential ingredient to doing anything worthwhile at all. The question then is, how do you reel yourself back from failure? How do you fall on the right side of that knife edge? And I guess what you need is a little bit of wisdom and honesty to look at something you've written that feels false or boring or derivative or in poor taste or bullshitty or inauthentic to you and just play not good enough and say to yourself, I bet I can do better. And then you sit yourself down and try to do better. And then once you've done better, decide it can still be better. And when you've made it better, take another crack at it to see if you can improve it even more. I don't know if I have any creative genius. Uh, I do have a work ethic. Uh, I think that, that really writing comes down to one thing and one thing only, and that's putting in the time. And there's no such thing as being frozen or paralyzed. Um, that's, a, that's a mindset, that's, that's letting the fear paralyze you. But actually in the moment where you feel the most afraid is when you've got to start typing. Nothing's preventing you from putting words on that blank page. Uh, and usually in those moments of greatest fear uh, is when you're going to come up with the most creative stuff. So you have to look at that as an opportunity as opposed to something that um, you know, is, is going to stop you in your tracks. If you're not afraid, then you're not taking risks. And if you're not taking risks, then you're not doing something original. I, I try to only write for myself because I think that uh, if I don't do that, then, I'm, then I'm, I feel like it's pandering. It's like trying to figure out what other people will like. And I, I, I try to be, I feel like the only way I can be honest, which is what I want to do, is to write what it is that I think without, with as little of that interference as, as possible. In some way, it has to be autobiographical. If you're telling a story and you're not bearing part of your soul or telling your truth, I think that you're, you're, not, you're not doing that right. The only thing I can suss out about making movies is you just get to a point where it has to be almost painful for you to not make it. That it <laughs> feels like it's... I'm stealing this from Cheryl Strait, actually. She said it when she was talking about writing novels. She said, it's like you're growing another heart inside your body. Mm -hmm. You've got to get that other heart out. And I think it's true whether you're making a movie with your friends or you're making a movie for um, like a, a studio. You're the only one who knows what it's uh, supposed to be. No one knows. There's no man behind the curtain. And also... You have to will it into existence because no one needs it until they know that they need it. Like it's not, um, it's not like it's not like it's not like something that you, you, you you're never. I think sometimes when you're when you're when you're coming up, you kind of have this sense that somebody at some point will be like, "Now it's your turn." Um, 
And it doesn't ever really happen like that. You kind of make your own turn. And I thought, I think between Lady Bird, I knew, I knew that very deeply with Lady Bird. And then, you know, again, I was making this for Columbia Pictures. It's a proper endeavor. And at the same time, y you have to will it into existence. Um, and I think that that's something in a way that's comforting to know that whether you have, you know, just the tiniest kind of bit of resources to pull it together or all the resources, it's it's only ever going to be you knowing what the thing is before it's there. The one thing I was remember thinking initially when I was trying to make films, and you always felt like you got nervous that somebody else was right who was talking to you, you know, who maybe was in a position of power, like that their opinion somehow was was right or better than yours, and somehow you, you didn't could never stop to think like, no, it's just different. You just think differently than I do, and that's okay, you know, but I'm not wrong. You know, you can get filled with such fear, and it's really easy to get, to just get your heart broken and kind of sort of beaten. At, you're sort of attempting to make films. I mean, you just, it's a miracle anytime any one of them gets made, you know? It's a miracle, and it's a miracle every time I feel like, it's a miracle every time a scene kind of gets done and through the birth canal and done. I mean, it's never any less of a miracle or, or any less difficult. Um, there's just a kind of, there just should be no fear, you know? I think that's, I just always remember kind of being pummeled by fear early on and feeling like, God, if I could have just got rid of that fear earlier, I, this, this might have been a little bit easier. It's just, don't give a fuck. That's kind of the best thing to do. Probably every successful writer on stage, screen, or prose has been told some version of give up at some point in their career. It's rejection. And if you can't deal with it, if you can't pick yourself up off the floor after someone's completely crushed your soul, and if you can't continue onward, then you probably shouldn't be trying to write for a living. I think rejection is key. I mean, look, I, my middle name is Rejection. I've, I've been rejected numerous times. And, and just forget about filmmakers, people in general. There are those people that just kind of coast through life, but the people, the, the, but the art and the, and, the, and, the, and the movies and the TV shows and the books and the, the, the characters that I relate to the most are the people that do get rejected, the people that have gone through struggle and that have conflict in their lives that had to overcome. That is so rich. Rejection can be really rich to art. I, I, I actually think it's really essential for art to be really good, is to have that sort of pain that goes with rejection. And so anytime you get rejected by somebody, the minute you do, the minute you start feeling pain, use that. Use that, remember it, remember that feeling, write it down, take a picture, whatever it is that you need to do. I think it's gonna really help you really understand what that means. Keep writing no matter what and try every door. People you think can help you won't. Sometimes it's because they can't and they're trying to help themselves in the unlikeliest places. This film came through the help of a stranger for me. So uh, in those bad jobs that you have, it will make you a better writer. The best advice I can give you is be tenacious. Be aggressive. Don't be polite. If you're polite, you'll be one of the many people standing in the line. You have to be a little pushy. You have to be prepared to say you're sorry that you were wrong or you possibly have made a mistake. But on the whole, you gotta go for it. You ain't never gonna round the bases unless you swing at the back. And if you don't swing at the ball, rather, you're never gonna get around first, second, and third. You just have to want it so desperately that you can go without food. Then you're on your way. You know, what you really need to be as a writer is lucky, and I can tell you how to be lucky, but I can tell you that if you keep working at it, one day an opportunity will open up and you'll feel lucky because you'll be like, oh, I've got this script and it's 10 drafts in and I know I've absolutely nailed it and I'm going to give it to this guy. So that, that would be my advice to you. Perseverance, life experience, right? What you feel passionate about, not what you think the market is dictating. And at the end of the day, good writing and passionate writing I do believe we'll always win out. Nothing is so terrible as a pretentious movie. I mean, a movie that aspires for something really terrific and doesn't pull it off is shit, it's scum. And everyone will walk on it as such. And that's why poor filmmakers, in a way, that's their greatest horror. 
is to be pretentious. So here you are, on one hand, it's trying to aspire to really do something. And on the other hand, you're not allowed to be pretentious. And finally you say, fuck it. I don't care if I'm pretentious or not pretentious, or if I've done it or I haven't done it. All I know is that I am going to see this movie. You don't have to know how to make a movie. If you truly love cinema with all your heart and with enough passion, you can't help but make a good movie. You don't have to go to school. You don't have to know a lens, you know, a 40 and a 50 and a fuck all that shit. Crossing the line, none of that shit's important. If you just truly love cinema with enough passion and you really love it, then you can't help but make a good movie.